The mysteries of Islam fascinate us time and time again. This is no different from the life story of the Prophet. Who was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam? An illiterate desert merchant who one day stumbled upon amazing Arabic rhetoric? Or was he the creation of Allah's greatest light? Sent down to earth to pull man out of ignorance and bring them to the purest of truths? I, Ali Burji, am on a journey to discover the real story behind the Prophet, the real story behind our religion, the root, the beginning, the cradle of civilization. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina wa Habibina Abil Qasim Muhammad al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam wa la'anatullah ala a'adaihim ajma'in min al-an ila qiyam yawm al-deen So Dr. Al-Aziz, we were discussing regarding the embargo that difficult, stressful time for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam Bani Hashim and the followers, those little followers in the early days of Islam so the Quraysh, they're doing whatever they can to um, alienate Bani Hashim and the little followers of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the rest of the community and the, the um, trade world. So the Muslims are pretty much um, in a, a siege in their, own, in their own homeland. So the Quraysh, as you've mentioned earlier, um, are planning to kill the Prophet. They're organizing a conspiracy to get rid of the Holy Prophet, to assassinate him. And you've mentioned that uh, the leaders, the chiefs of the tribes have all signed and agreed <clears throat> to the embargo and also to the um, eventually assassination of the Holy Prophet. And if we can just discuss the, regarding the events of orchestrating all this. Yeah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين واللعنة على أعدائهم أجمعين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد As um, was mentioned earlier that they wrote this document which is referred to as uh, الصحيفة الملعونة الأولى the first accursed document um, and they uh, Placed it for safety in, uh, for safekeeping in, uh, in the Kaaba, inside the Kaaba. Of course, uh, later on, this is just between bracket. Later on, um, we come across um, a second Sahif um, al the second accursed document, and that was done. At the time when the Prophet ﷺ and the Muslims in the last year, uh, they came for Hajj, and uh, five of the companions, they swore an oath and uh, recorded that oath in a, in a document that um, if uh, w when the Prophet dies or he is killed, uh, then we will ensure that. Uh, we uh, take over uh, the succession, take over the reign, and not allow his Ahlul Bayt to succeed him. Sorry, where was this written? This was written in um, uh, at the time of Hajj when the Prophet came for uh, Hajjatul Wada, uh, the fall um, uh, in the year um, ten. Um, and then um, the, this was done, but this was refer This is referred to. We'll come to that, inshallah, in the future. But yeah. this is referred to as the second accursed document. Okay. Um, this was also placed in the Kaaba. So this, the first accursed document, um, this was signed by, as I said, forty or some people, some narrations say, eighty chiefs of uh, uh, of of the clans of Quraysh, and it was. Uh, Placed in the inside the Kaaba for safekeeping, mm -hmm. and their aim was to be united to nothing but kill the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa Okay, and um, um, because he is spreading his this new religion mm -hmm. and 
more and more people are okay. embracing this religion, and this is unacceptable to, to Quraysh as okay. far as they were concerned. How were they planning to assassinate? They, they wanted to kill the Prophet um, uh, overtly or covertly. In any way possible, they wanted to kill the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And um, um, this was their aim. Uh, in fact, when, and because Bani Hashim were protecting him, um, unfortunately, uh, Bani Hashim were main um, body which was protecting the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And although there were other Muslims, uh, in Mecca, but they weren't um, um, the target, if you like. The target was the Prophet and whoever was protecting him, which was Bani Hashim. And Bani Hashim says that the narration say, um, some there were some who were mu'mineen, who had who believed in the Prophet and they were obviously obliged to protect him, and there were some who had not. They were still not mu'min. They didn't mm. believe in the in the Prophet But because they were part of Bani Hashim, they wanted to, as part of their duty, being he is one of them, they wanted to protect him as well. So Bani Hashim became the target. They were all, if you like, surrounded in Shab, in the in the land of Abu Talib, the the valley of Abu Talib, alayhi salam. And uh, and then uh, Abu Talib decided because they were becoming very aggressive. Um, basically, he kept even night vigil for the protection of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa And um, he he had his sons and other members of Bani Hashim um, uh, um, guarding the perimeter of um, various entry points uh, uh, to the Shab to the plot of land, <coughs> even. In areas where there were, I feel like mountainous areas surrounding the the, the the plot of land, he had people there, his sons and uh, um, other members of Bani Hashim. So they were actually uh, throughout the three years they were keeping night vigil to make sure that uh, there is no infiltration, no assassination attempt, and uh, not only that, um, w when the Prophet uh, used to sleep at one place at night. He used to wake him up, and after like two hours, he sort of move him, move him somewhere else, and he get his son to sleep. <laughs> in one case, he asked uh, his son Ali. He said, "You come and sleep in front, in, in place of your cousin and your Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alayhi. Um and he could go somewhere somewhere else. And um, Imam Ali said to him, "Okay, I'll sleep here, but I will be a target and I will be killed." And Abu Talib responded to him that in a, in a beautiful piece of uh, poetry um, that um, <coughs> um, everyone eventually dies in this world. The content, the um, mm. essence of that poetry, that everyone die, eventually dies in this world. But it's good that one die for someone as beloved as the Prophet He is the messenger of God and we have to protect him. And it's the greatest honor that we give our life for him. And, and if you don't do that, you eventually will die. But what better than dying for someone like the, the Messenger of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? And Imam Ali alayhi salam responded that I'm not fearful of dying. I just wanted to say that I'm prepared to die, and I'm how obedient I am to you. Imam Ali was saying to Abu Talib alayhi salam, um, and he of course stayed there. So this this is one instance, but this was happening. Um, all along during these three years because they were very determined Quraysh that they should not allow uh, the Prophet to continue like this because he's more and more he's gaining more grounds more people uh, not only in Mecca but um, um, overseas as well um, in Habasha this is happening um, so they were very determined to do that and uh, Abu Talib alayhi salam um, despite all the hardship, uh, you can imagine that lack of food, um, there are reports where the people of Quraysh, they used to sit during the day and speak to one another um, by the, by the Kaaba, for example, saying that, did you hear last night? We could, we could, we could hear the children of Bani Hashim crying. Um, 
and um, that doesn't bother them one bit. Although there no. are some reports that some objected, they said this is not right, this is not right. But the majority, the overwhelming majority, mm -hmm. uh, uh, were uh, heartless. Were not bothered. They said uh, we are not going to um, uh, give up on that. We have to uh, uh, put the pressure so that. Uh, Abu mm. Talib gives us, or Bani Hashim gives us uh, uh, Muhammad so that we kill him. So oh they no were Allah. determined in the, in the How mission. ironic, sorry to interrupt you, but how ironic that uh, Quraysh, how history repeats itself, even even now we see in the Hijaz, how, how the Shia are being oppressed. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, Haq, Haq is trying, they're trying to hide the truth and oppress the followers of Ahlul Bayt, alayhi wa salam. Uh, nothing, uh, not, not much has changed since then, subhanAllah. Unfortunately. SubhanAllah, um, yes. Um, yes, so um, <coughs> this continued and you, you cannot um, um, exaggerate the suffering um, Definitely. of It's difficult to comprehend. It's difficult to imagine that. What how, how hard it must be. Um, so we take so many things for granted. Yeah. For three years this went on. and um, three years. Not only they were suffering on the one hand um, hunger and thirst and um, continually, um, on the other hand, they had difficulty even buying buying the things. They paid high prices for them. Yeah. All of this on one side. On the other side, they have to keep the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi safe. And and under the the leadership of Abu Talib alaihi salam, um, and uh, remember that. Not all of them had the sort of faith that Abu Talib had, but um, he commanded the authority, and therefore uh, he managed to keep Bani Hashim together um, out of loyalty and out of faith, loyalty for the tribe of for the clan of Bani Hashim and a faith of uh, having the faith in, in the Prophet uh, to protect the Prophet. Okay. So they had two things. One is the, the extreme suffering in terms of hunger okay. and thirst and so on, and the other one was uh, okay. the fact that uh, uh, they had to, day and night, they had to protect the Prophet ﷺ. Were, the, were they preparing themselves for migration? Because we know, we know eventually the Holy Prophet ﷺ prepares and uh, um, migrates to Yathrib, Medinat yeah, al not, not at that stage. They, at that stage they were... Uh, so this is the first three years <coughs> of the boycott. <coughs> and how many years in total the boycott It's lasted? Three years. Three years. Yeah. So some, this is some within people say four, but it's between three okay. or four years. So it's within the first three years. This is the the atmosphere in Mecca for the Muslims. Yes. Uh, for for Bani Hashim. For Bani Hashim. For and, Bani Hashim. and the f first early yeah, this Muslims. This is the the last, if you like, three years, uh, because they mm. were free before that, if you like. They were being harassed when mm. they when the mission of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi began. Intensified. Uh, uh, it was there. There wasn't a lot, especially when he hadn't gone public. Mm. And uh, he, he used to come and pray in the mosque, in the Kaaba, <coughs> by the Kaaba, and his wife Khadija and his cousin Imam Ali alayhi salam. And later on he was joined by uh, Ja'far ibn Abi Talib. So he was uh, um, the third one to embrace Islam, if you like. <coughs> That is Khadija, Imam Ali, and Ja'far ibn Abi Talib afterwards. <coughs> and of course Hamza. The uncle of the Prophet So at that time they were free, but when he when he went public, that that annoyed uh, uh, hmm. Quraysh, hmm. and the thing which really annoyed Quraysh, which they resorted to the boycott thing, was the fact yeah. that he started to gain more and more supporters, more and more started to embrace Islam. Even the slaves of of Quraysh started embracing uh, embracing Islam. Members of Quraysh started embracing Islam. So they weren't happy about this. And when they saw what was happening in Abyssinia, for example, and delegations of priests and bishops, they used to come and embrace Islam. They, they found it too, too much to swallow, and they decided to go on this embargo. And as, as, as we know, um, Khadija salam, and Abu Talib both die not very far from each other. The incidents are not very yeah. far from each other. Yeah, before we come to this, mm. uh, I, if, you, if I may, I'd like to... <coughs> When, um, as this hardship went, continued, the suffering continued, um, and in fact it says that they, 
it got to a stage where Abu Talib ran out of money and say the Khadija and the money that they had or uh, other possession, they ran out of that money as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, so things were becoming extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. When Jibreel um, uh, descended upon the Prophet and he informed him of, if you like, the good news. Jibreel um, informed the Prophet that that document, the accursed document, which they had, these 40 chiefs or 80 chiefs mm. had signed, which is the terms of treaty of the uh, 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 embargo agreement. Um, the, the Jibrail uh, informed the Prophet that termites have been sort of eating into this document mm. and it's, it's, they've shredded the document and it's gone into torn it into small pieces and the only remnants which are left are where the name of Allah was written. Oh, so it's a miracle. If you like a miracle. Yeah. And then um, Abu Talib <coughs> was very pleased about this. He said, to Quraysh, let's go. Sorry, he said to Bani Hashim, let's go to Quraysh. And um, Quraysh were sitting in, if, if like, by the, by the Kaaba, and so uh, Abu Talib came with the Prophet and Bani Hashim. They said, okay, they've come to surrender. They've come to surrender Muhammad and to accept our terms. And he spoke to Quraysh and he said to them, Abu Talib, that um, he, the, Muhammad tells me that um, his, his, his Lord has informed me that his, um, this document that you've signed um, is no longer. They said, no, it's a safe place in the, in the camp. Um, he said, it's been uh, torn to pieces, it's been eaten sort of by termites, and the only thing which is remaining are where the names of Allah are there. He said, they said to him, no, this is not true. He said, well, if this is true, then um, that means uh, Muhammad doesn't lie, and he is supported by his Lord, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, and then um, you are false. And if this turns out to be not true, and the document is still in, in, intact, then I will surrender Muhammad to you, to do whatever you like. They said this is fair. So if the document is intact, Abu Talib will, send, will surrender Muhammad to the uh, Quraysh to kill him. But on the other hand, if the document is not, and is being destroyed by the termites, then uh, there will be no harassment against Bani Hashim. And they agreed to that. And they went, and Fulak took it, took it out of the box, and they realized, they saw that exactly what, the, mm. what Abu Talib had told them. That um, uh, the document is almost non-existent, given only sh shreds of uh, uh, small pieces of paper, um, with, the, with the exception of wherever they had mentioned the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, this was uh, a huge blow to Quraysh. And as a result of that, when the people saw this, a lot of people started gathering. And one of the people actually heard about it later on. <coughs> it says, فَأَسْلَمَ يَوْمَئِذٍ عَالَمٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ عَالَمٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ A huge number of people um, embrace Islam because of this. They could see the truth of uh, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Lord of the Prophet, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, is stands by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and whatever Quraysh was saying is not. Uh, did they, did they um, fulfill the agreement though, Quraysh? Did they yes. lift the, the, the yes, they embargo? Yes, they, they could feel safe because that was the, uh, their agreement and they could um, feel safe, they go back to their, Bani, Bani Hashim, to go back to their houses. Okay. So why would they migrate if now Quraysh would leave, let them be? Why would they plan to eventually migrate to Yathrib? This goes uh, <coughs> about the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when, when Abu Talib dies and Sayyidah Khadija die, 
they uh, so they, they he passed received away. His... They passed away after the incident of the letter. Yes. So yes. The, after the they 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 if you like they went back to their homes mm -hmm. and they left the shed. The but of, of the damage had already been done because they were left without money. Both uh, Khadija السلام, and Abu Talib السلام, they're both broke. They had no money whatsoever. Well, yeah, I mean, they, um, they had, it, it's all in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they, um, of course, um, they, um, yes, they spend, if you like, mm. uh, they pay, but they, it was their duty to do whatever it takes so that they keep peop their people alive. Mm. So, uh, and they address, they address that and um, they made sure that people do not lose, if you like, faith. And um, Alhamdulillah, we came when the, this miracle came, uh, uh, all of Bin Hashim were free to go back to their businesses and to their homes and properties and so on. Um, but when Abu Talib السلام, dies and, um, and Sayyidah Khadija uh, also died within a uh, couple of months, if you like. Um, uh, Archangel Jibrail descends on the, on the Prophet and says that uh, it's time for you to leave Mecca because you don't have, you've lost your main supporters, if you like. Um, this was the reason, basically, instruction mm. from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that he should he should leave um, for uh, Medina and. Uh, of course, there is a lot of uh, uh, there is um, some discussion which needs to be made, which probably we don't have time now, uh, which need to be made as to the kind of preparation that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi made um, uh, before uh, the migration to Medina. So in here again, Abu Imam Ali alayhi uh, salam faced imminent death, um, basically killing by. 40 warriors, if you like, Quraysh warriors, uh, and despite that, he uh, accepted the, the, the challenge and accepted that he would sacrifice himself uh, uh, for the safety of the Prophet. Sallallahu